I'm going to show you how I make one of my best selling products. It is a simple, out of this world serving tray. It has handles, can be customized easy with laser engraving, and I usually sell them anywhere from 60 to 100 bucks, just depending on the size, the type of wood, and how much customization is done. I start with milling the lumber and using some tight bond 3 to glue it up. I recently got these Pony Jorgensen parallel clamps, and I have to say I love them. I wish I would have bought them a long time ago. It makes life a lot easier during glue ups. And here you can see I'm using some culls to keep everything flat. I don't tighten the parallel clamps all the way until I get the culls on nice and tight. Then I crank on the parallel clamps to get some squeeze out. Once the glue squeezes out, I clean it up on both sides. Just makes life easier later. After removing the clamps, we're going to the CNC to flatten this puppy. So I use the blue tape and CA glue method to hold these down. And I have these little red thumb screws. I use those to align everything. That way when I flip the board over later, it keeps it right in the right spot. And of course, to flatten it, I use my favorite flattening bit. I flatten one side, then I remove the blue tape, I flip it over, I repeat the process, flattening the other side. I also take the time to drill the holes for the handles. I've gotten in the habit after making a round cutting board once, it was a pain to try and drill the holes, so now I just do it right here. You're about to witness my first fail. I changed my bit, but I forgot to change the tool path and I pushed play on the old tool path. Whoops. Then right after I have another fail where the bit slips out and it ruined the bit, but not the board, thankfully. So I switched bits and I got the job done. Then comes the sanding. I sand through the grits from 80 grit all the way up to 180. Then I pop the grain with water, I let it dry, and I do a final sand with 220 grit. I like to add a chamfer to all the holes to sink the handle screws below the surface. I just think it looks nicer. And for a finish, I like to use white mineral oil. I lay it on heavy and let it absorb for a few hours and then wipe off the excess. Pretty simple. Then I grab one of my wife's best white towels. Make sure it's the best and I lay it out because we're about to add some cutting board conditioner to finish off this board. I'll leave a link above here if you want to know how to make your own conditioner. Basically, you just wipe it on with a white scotch bright pad, let it dry, and buff it out. Time to add some feet to the bottom. I like to add feet, it keeps the board up off of a wet counter, and I think it looks nicer. You can see I'm using my favorite little corner jig to get the holes drilled consistently on each corner. Uh, if you have a CNC, you can download the plans for this jig. They're free on my website. I'll leave a link down below for that. As you can see, I screw the feet in by hand. I, don't, I just want them to be hand tight. I don't want to use a drill and strip out the hole by accident. So I screw them in by hand. And just to test it, it is completely flat. Our last step here is to add these five inch bar handles. And I tighten these by hand too. I don't like to use a drill with these. I screw them in by hand just so I don't over tighten them and break them. And if you haven't noticed, 
someone's hiding out in the grain of this board, making it an out of this world serving tray. If you know who it is, leave a comment below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and as always, go be great.